to order um, if there is anyone who would like to go ahead and depart at this time they are welcome to you're more than welcome to stay for the wonderful board meeting we have um, for this evening but um, I just want to let everyone know too that uh, board member um, Patrick Hurley will be joining us via phone and um, board member Gina Knapp uh, was not able to join us via phone as she is probably unreachable in Alaska or something such as that so vacation yeah all right we're gonna go ahead and call oh sorry what oh thanks Patrick okay. all right so um, we're gonna go ahead and start open forum um, welcome to those who are in attendance to address the board or listen during open forum open forum provides
sometimes we take a break because we do have a um, live captioner. <laughs> but we didn't need to do that tonight, so. Okay, so we're right here. Okay. Sorry, it's going to take me a little bit of time to get myself organized, so bear with me. Okay, so where am I at? I can make the motion if you want, Jenny. Oh, okay. So um, I guess we need a motion to approve the agenda for the July 17th, 2023 Board of Education organizational meeting as published. I move that the Board of Education approve the organizational meeting agenda for the July 17th, 2023 as published. Second. Okay, it looks like Tom has made the motion and Jan has seconded. Um, it, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay, great. So it looks like we have a six in favor, zero opposed. All right, so next up is uh, our reports from members of the Board of Education and Superintendent on items not included in the agenda. Do we have any? Oh, is this where we go through yeah. the whole thing? Yeah. Okay. Where'd Tom go? Okay. So, Jan, do you have anything you'd like to add? Uh, <laughs> you're not helping me. Like, what have I been up to? What have you been up to, Jan? Did you, would you, yeah, tell us what you've been doing. I cannot recall what I've been doing uh, since the last meeting, other than I was thrilled to have my six year old and eight year old uh, granddaughters from Dallas stay with me the last week. But the real highlight for me in that was in just general conversation, both of them said that they wanted to be teachers. And I wow. said, that's cool. That's fantastic. Thank you. All right, Jim, you're up. No, I don't have anything. I do welcome Sonia to the board. I'm looking forward to working with you. Excellent. And then, uh, okay, Tom's not here. So Sonia, do you have anything that you would like to just public comment you'd like to make? Yes, I just like to say that I am very honored to serve on this board. I've been living in the district, uh, the Blue Valley School District, for 25 years. And my youngest son graduated from Blue Valley back in 2007. And now my grandson also attend the Blue Valley School. So I am thrilled and happy. And I hope that I can bring added value to the school district. Wonderful, and I guess I'll follow up with welcome. We're so excited to have you on the board. Um, this is a, a really fantastic board, and, and uh, we do wonderful things to support our district, and I think you're going to be a wonderful asset, so thank you. All right, so, oh, Tanya, sorry. Yeah. Um, so I have a, a few thing, a few comments to make here. Uh, so even though it's summer, we have lots going on within the district, and so we want to highlight a, a few students. Uh, the first one are some national merit students uh, who receive some various scholarships, and you can see those students listed here on the screen. These four scholar, or these four students. Uh, also want to highlight a rising junior at Blue Valley West, uh, Lian, who was selected to the Kansas Youth Ambassador in STEM uh, for the White House. Uh, program, so we congratulate her. Uh, we had two students, um, who five students in Johnson County, and two of them happened to be from Blue Valley, uh, Brett from Blue Valley Northwest, and Emma Kate uh, from Blue Valley Southwest. Both of them are graduates. They um, go on to compete in the finals of the KC Superstar competition, and so we are rooting both Brett and Emma Kate on in that competition. Um, incoming Blue Valley, this is a great story, incoming Blue Valley North freshman Drew Squire has spent the last semester uh, in New York and has actually been on Broadway. And um, as you can see on here, he, he was in um, on Broadway for the last year. He's now back. It recently won a Tony Award for Best Play. And so we're uh, looking forward to um, welcoming Drew back to Blue Valley North. He went to Leewood Middle. Um, earlier in his uh, educational career, and so I'm guessing we'll see him on a Mustang stage at some point. And then this story, uh, Leanne Wong is a Blue Valley High graduate. Uh, Leanne was an alternate for the Olympic uh, gymnastics team and is now in college and has uh, made some money uh, selling bows. And it's, what's interesting about this story is that she made those bows in one of her high school elective classes, a, a business class, I believe. She started a little business, and that has 
um, blossomed. And so uh, we're proud of Leanne for a lot of things, but that's a pretty exciting uh, journey for her. Um, and then I also just wanted to highlight, um, we have so much going on in the district. Uh, our students, uh, we have camps going on. We have uh, both sports and academic programs, the debate camps, band camps. Um, every time I, I'm in the early morning walker and I see our, our sports teams out, our cross country teams out running, um, weight programs, et cetera. So there's lots going on in the buildings and um, we appreciate all that our coaches and sponsors are doing to support those. And then the other thing I just want to acknowledge is that um, our hearts are with the Blue Valley High community. Uh, Blue Valley High um, over the weekend lost a beloved teacher, uh, Catherine Sanflay, to um, cancer. She battled that really hard for a number of years and she uh, has left a, a lasting impression at Blue Valley High for both the students and the staff. And just wanted to know that that community, that our hearts are with them and we're thinking about her family and she has three uh, young sons and we will continue to wrap around that family and support them. So that's all I have. Great, thank you. Um, so it looks like next we have board advisory committee report. I believe we only have one. That's correct. Kyle Hayden's gonna give the finance and operations. Oh, sorry, Patrick. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and give it from right here. That's all right. So um, the Finance and Operations Board Advisory Committee met on July 13th in the Board of Education room. Jeremy, Jeremy McFadden, Executive Director of Finance, reviewed the meeting agenda and welcomed the new committee members. The Blue Valley Rec uh, representat representatives presented the proposed 23-24 budget and mill levy for the Blue Valley Recreation Commission. And this is an agenda item later this evening. Jake Slobodnik, Executive Director of Operations, presented an overview of the Facilities and Operations Department, which you guys heard this morning in board workshop. Uh, Jake also presented the bids and contracts on the consent agenda for board approval this evening. The next committee meeting is scheduled for August 10th. Wonderful, thank you. So um, it looks like next uh, is the uh, consent agenda. And um, Jim, um, I was, okay. Um, does anyone have changes to the consent agenda? I know that Jim wanted to pull a few things off um, and tell me if I'm correct on this, but uh, the following contracts will be pulled from the consent agenda and automatically become a new business item for separate consideration. The two Children's Mercy Hospital con contracts will become new business item E. The four technology contracts become new business item F, which include CDWG, two CDWGs, Syntex Technologies and Tech Cycle Solutions, LLC. And finally, um, you wanted the sports field specialties contract pulled off um, to become new business item G. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so um, any other changes to the consent agenda? Okay, so um, we're going to go ahead and need a motion uh, for the consent agenda for July 17th, 2023 organizational meeting as published. Oh, as modified maybe? Or as the, published? I move that the Board of Education approve the consent agenda for the July 17th, 2023 organizational meeting as published. All right, do we have a second? I'll second it. Fantastic. All right, um, do I need to ask for any other discussion or are we good? Okay. All right, so um, all in favor, say aye or raise your right hand. Hi. All right. Any opposed? Okay. So it looks like we have five yays. And is that good enough? Okay. <laughs> okay. Excellent. All right. Consent agenda, got through all that. Now we get new business. Now we get new business. Okay. 
All right, so now we are looking at new business. So um, first up is the Blue Valley Recreation Center at-large commissioner appointment. So we will, uh, I would entertain a motion. What? I'll make the motion. Thanks. Um, let's see if I can just wing it. Here we it's, go. Can you find it? Uh, yeah, I found it. Okay. I move that the Board of Education appoint Christy Pribula as the at-large commissioner for the Blue Valley Recreation Center to a new four-year term beginning August 1st, 2023 and expiring July 31, 2027. Second. All right, any discussion? Uh, I'll say um, Jan, and this is just comments, I suppose. Jan, Tom, and I had the opportunity to interview the candidates for Blue Valley Rec Commission. We had great candidates. Um, and we had, oh, we had like more than 10, and oh, people that, from all different walks of life and different, um, and different, um, you know, backgrounds, et cetera, et cetera, and just people, lifelong Blue Valley people. And we we just put, it was very difficult to choose. We just put names on a card, and, and, and Christy was somebody that we all put her name on a card, and I think she's going to be a fantastic member of the commission. Fantastic. I agree. Great process. Us three, and then along with Clayton Orkey, you're the chair over there, so. Okay. All good. Fantastic. So um, all those in favor, um, either say yay or raise your right hand. Aye. Any opposed? All right. So that would be six yays. All right. So next, um, let's see here. It looks like we have um, Blue Valley Recreation Commission 2023-2024 budget. Good evening. Thanks for having us, Dr. Merrigan and uh, fellow board members. Sonia, welcome. Let me know if you ever need a tour of our facilities. We'll be happy to show you around whenever you get, get less busy, probably, so if it happens. Uh, just just tonight, we uh, my Shane D. Wall, Blue Valley Recreation, uh, executive director there, along beside me, um, Linda Stevie is our admin manager, and just want to talk to you guys a bit about our budget. As you guys all know, we come before you each year to approve the budget. Um, with you all. So just a little bit about Blue Valley Recreation. Um, formed in 1986, a uh, concerned group of citizens brought, brought forth just a, a need to increase the recreation uh, activities and the amount of people in it. Um, we serve the same amount of the same district, everyone within the district, we serve those people. And um, I think right now, currently we have um, just over 80 full-time employees Back from 1986, I think we had, I think just under 10, I believe. Now we have 80 full-time um, staff, and then we have just under 900 part-time seasonal. So we've grown quite a bit over the years, and uh, happy to keep uh, offering the services and making sure we do the best we can. So, my, oh, my clicker, I need that. Yeah. Uh, while we're doing that, just want to tell you, we have uh, four different facilities. And we're going to talk about three of those tonight. The one I won't be showing will be the maintenance, which is uh, just uh, normal maintenance. Um, but we will have um, the activity center, the closest one here to us. It has, uh, occupies our pool, gymnastics and dance. So we also have hold of a lot of our special events, uh, special pops and, and inclusive rec and things like that happen there. Right now, if you go in there, it's a very busy time of year. We have a lot of summer camps going on. So uh, like I mentioned this morning, I know I showed this slide to you guys before. Um, it's very busy. Um, this is where usually we get our, our younger kids through there and their first introduction to Blue Valley Recreation. Um, next, we have the sports complex. Um, or there you'll see we're housed all of our baseball, softball. A lot of tournaments go down there. Uh, it's pretty busy this time of year. We, as you see just there, we have uh, 725,000 visitors that come every year. Uh, last year, we just did over 10,000 baseball, softball games. Uh, 
uh, throughout there. So we, we occupy a lot of the, the kids. Uh, I know one of the numbers I threw out this morning was we have just over 5,500 kids playing baseball, softball. So uh, keep pretty busy there. Um, the next, the newest facility we have is the Recreation Center. Um, we, we currently are averaging around 700,000 visitors. Uh, we have just under 10,000 members currently for the Recreation Center. Uh, we house a lot of our basketball. I know this morning when I was talking about the basketball, the size of the basketball program, just about 7,000 uh, kids through the Blue Valley School District play. And uh, that's something we occupy a lot of your gymnasiums and stuff throughout the winter. So uh, we keep, keep, keep moving along and this program continues to grow. Um, uh, just on this slide, um, just want to show everyone the progress we did. Uh, as you all know, or some of you know, we did a facility assessment a year and a half ago, about a six month uh, piece together. We put together a five year capital improvement plan. And here you'll see some of the um, things we've done over the last year, a lot of field. Uh, our main focus on, on this facility was the asset preservation and safety. I want a few of the things there, and that's something we really uh, try to be as consistent with with, with Blue Valley. We, like I mentioned, Jake, uh, we do a lot of stuff and making sure all of our facilities, COVID, we're still uh, fixing a lot of the things from there. So uh, we're really trying to keep uh, moving forward. And and due to the, the facility and, and the five-year CIP, we ended up, up we ended up raising the mill levy last year to 2.99. Uh, this year, uh, we are proposing a decrease to 2.96. And um, I'll kind of let Linda go into more of the details of the, of the budgets and the funds that we operate for the mill levy, so. Okay, so I know we did talk about a lot of this this morning, so I just want to touch on it again. We, do, we have two funds. We have our benefits fund and we have our general fund. Our benefits fund is 100% funded by taxes. And for the last couple of years, we've been able to reduce. We've had a fund balance we've been able to, to reduce but we've kind of used that up. So we do have the flexibility with that 2.96 mil levy to split it between the two funds the best way that we need to. And this last year we had the benefits fund at 0.2, but we need to increase that up to a 0.5. And obviously by doing that, that is going to reduce the amount to 2.46 for the mill levy that goes to our general fund, which is gonna take that down a little bit from the 2.79 that we use this year. In our general fund, um, well, just to back up, on our, on our benefits fund, that covers all the benefits for our full-time employees and covers all the FICA um, for almost 900 part-time employees to run all of our different programs. And then the general fund covers everything else that we have. We have two kinds of revenue. We have tax revenue that we use to cover. We have something called certificates of participation. And that is the equivalent. We cannot do bonds. So the school district will do bonds, and we will do the certificates of participation. Um, the taxes pay for that. They pay for our capital. They pay for a lot of our administrative cost, and they pay for a lot of our facilities cost, our maintenance, and our custodial and things like that. And then our local revenue includes our program and membership fees. And that covers those three facilities that Shane just showed. That covers all of the direct cost at those three locations. So with lowering the mill levy for this fund, we are going to come up a little bit short on um, the um, not have enough revenue to cover our expenditures. So we are doing an intentional spend down of 1.3 million out of our unencumbered fund balance. So this breaks out into this, um, like I said, our property tax between the two funds ends up being about 56%. Um, that's a big part of that is because the benefits is completely tax supported. And even with, because there has been a mill levy, or not a mill levy, because there was a assessed value increase this year, we are seeing 6% increase on the tax side but that still wasn't enough to cover our 8% inflationary cost. So that's where we were taking our 6%, almost 6% of our reserves to make that budget balanced. Our revenue split down into this. Our biggest percentage of um, cost goes to our personnel and benefits, followed by our capital. 
And then you'll see that we also have about a 2% of our to total budget that we have set aside for a contingency. The contingency account is pretty much like um, an individual um, emergency account. And a, a few, we've had an, a contingency account. I've been at Blue Valley Rec over 20 years, and every year we have a contingency account. Some years we don't have to touch it. Some years we do. You may remember a few years ago, there was a February that was really, really cold, and there was um, additional surcharges added on to our gas our gas usage and things like that. And that's the example of things like that, the unplanned expenses that we have that set aside for. And for that, we have a half a million dollars, which like I said, is about 2% of the total budget. So this is our budget timeline with what's left over. Tonight, um, we're presenting to you all. Um, the board will approve or modify and approve our budget. And then next month, we will take that to um, and do our public hearings. So are there any questions? Can, can you explain the, how, the difference between the contingency fund and the unencumbered cash balances, how you use those? The unencumbered cash balance is what we have left after we have spent, our, um, after we've taken in our revenues and then what we've spent. So that's that difference. And that unencumbered fund balance in both funds are what's going to get us through. We get our tax um, revenues. Just like we get it through the school district and they send it out to us, we get about 55% of that in January and the other 45% in June. And so that unencumbered fund balance gets us through until we get our next payment in January. And then you, you I mean, cash fluctuates, and then you invest that in short term treasuries, et cetera? We, we have it invested in, we have it, um, we have a maximum, we do two year CDs, and um, then we can only do like $250,000 on those because of FDIC insurance, so then the bigger amounts are going into the T-bills, and we vary those based on what our cash flow projections are, yes. And right now, and I know that because we just worked on our financials for Wednesday night, we are averaging about a 5% return on all of our investments. Can you go back to the budget? Sorry, the um, the benefits. Uh huh. The um, so you've got a six hundred thousand dollar increase in expenditures. Can you just explain what the what's driving? Is it? I sure will. Yeah. I sure will. And and actually, that um, that proposed budget for this next year is actually less than what our proposed budget was for this year. What we have we do is we budget as if we are fully staffed. And then we end up with vacancies. We end up with classes that don't go. So we don't have as many FICA expenses and things like that. To be honest, I'm going to expect that it's probably going to be about 1.7 on that. But if we don't budget for it, we don't have the funds to cover it. So that's why we do go ahead and budget at that. So what will happen next year is that we get towards the end of the year, we'll look at what our anticipated unencumbered fund balance is. And we will adjust our requested tax revenue accordingly. And we will do that in both both funds, actually. But especially with this one, since it only comes from tax revenue. Okay. Can can you, Shane? Maybe you can talk just about if if you could compare what was going on 2019 from a from a re, from a revenue from memberships and you know the program revenue, all that non-tax revenue, and where you are now. Uh, I I think in 2019, we're finally getting back to those numbers, still not fully recovered from that. You're still below those numbers? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So if, if you, um, there's, can, you've got, uh, let me ask one other question. Have you ever been, as a school district, wouldn't be the school district's fault, but it would be the county's fault. Have, have we ever been late in getting the money to you, as far as you know? Not, not to my knowledge, no. everything works no. through, and, and no. quite frankly, it's been a great. No, event. and I'm going to tell you, we've we've talked to other agencies across the county where they have a lag, and you guys get the money to us. Yeah, I mean, like the next day after you get it. I mean, we've had a really good relationship with yep. with it. Um, I mean, it messes up you guys' cash flow if you don't. <laughs> so yeah, mm -hmm. so so it always gets to us, and it yeah, very prompt. Yeah. Well, I would just like to add uh, thank you this morning for really, you know, your in-depth
presentation and we talked about this quite a bit you know the budget and and the process and and thanks to my board cohorts who sit uh, on the the rec commission and ask a lot of really great questions um, that, that can be answered you know even to, before we get to this point and that helps you formulate kind of where you you are today so thank you and I also want to say I you know Blue Valley Rec is such a big it's a huge gem it's a huge asset in our community and um, you know almost all of our kiddos have started out you know playing sports or activities or clubs with Blue Valley Rec and I can't imagine our community without you so thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Very much. I just I agree with everything you said. I think the partnership, which is different, right between a rec commission and the district in a positive way, has been a huge thing. And I appreciate the thoroughness, our liaisons that sit on your on your board, and the conversations we've had regarding this, and then the way you guys conduct your business overall. It's definitely a huge positive. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Do we uh, have a motion? I move that the board of education approve the Blue Valley Rec Commission 2023-2024 budget. Second. Second. Oh, yeah, sorry, Patrick. Uh, any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, either raise your right hand or say aye. aye. Any opposed? Great. Motion passes. Six zero. Six zero. Yeah. Fantastic. Right. So that Congratulations. Was by Tom, second by Jan. Jan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You have a scout in the audience as well. I don't know if you've acknowledged. That's true. Okay. We would like to acknowledge the um, BSA scout that we have in the audience. Um, are you working on a merit badge? Yes. Um, I'm working on a merit badge for the What, what troop are you with? Excellent, excellent. Well, welcome, and if you have any questions, I think any of us can answer, and I would like to say that I also have uh, uh, girls in BSA, um, one eagled last year and one's working on hers this year, so amazing things. That's fantastic, and thank you for being here. What's, uh, what's your name and where do you go to school? Um, Ruth's mother. Okay, nice. and this is your mother? Yes. Ruth's mother, excellent, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> We'll call well, you Ruth's mother. Is this, <laughs> honestly, is this the greatest night of your life? <laughs> you can say Top no. Top three. You can say no. Yeah, you can say no. <laughs> well, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. All right. So it looks like next on the list is district goals. Right. So if they will pull those up for me. Um, so we talked about these goals last uh, month during our workshop, our kind of end of the year reflection. We reflected on our goals and then um, proposed some new goals for the district. Um, so I'm not going to read them to you because I, I know that you are all very capable of that. But uh, it talks, again, in different areas, talks very much about finance and operations on that side of the house where Kyle and Jeremy and Jake uh, would work around making sure we have a balanced budget, making sure that we program for our bond, um, making sure that we have a, a new transfer policy that will be coming up in there as well. Um, academic services, where Dr. Collier and her team uh, will do some accountability measures, really look at our academics. Uh, we, pr we provided some preliminary data last time. We'll be in later um, in the year with so an updated once our academic data is finalized to, to kind of show you where we're at there, but we're seeing some some progress uh, in both math and reading, and so we're really excited about the work we're doing around there. So there's some literacy and some math goals. We know we've been working on the high school experience. Um, mental health, uh, two different goals there. Uh, one is that these are, I'm going to highlight these a little bit because these are unique, and one is that 100% of our school administrators will be trained in um, threat assessments. And so uh, we started that. I, I don't know how most of them probably have done that. Two more to go, a couple more to go. So uh, we have administrators who are going through a really thorough threat assessment uh, for students. And so that will help us as well. The other goal we have is that 15% of our secondary staff 
will participate in mental health first aid training. Um, this is something that we partnered with the Ed Foundation on, and they have helped us to secure funding so that we are training trainers uh, to work with our coaches and sponsors, uh, specifically around mental health first aid. This is not training them to be counselors. This is training them to identify when students are struggling and some, some things that they could do uh, to assist those students. So uh, we think those are really uh, great goals and specific to us. And then finally, some exemplary educator goals where uh, Dr. Punswick and his ed team will work on uh, recruiting and retaining staff, talk about negotiating. We're getting ready to negotiate with our Teachers Association coming up, uh, as well as recruiting. We know how crucial that is. Uh, we heard you know, in open forum the, some of the tools that we'll be able to use, but uh, he, continue, he and his team, again, continue to go out and recruit and do some innovative things. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions on any of those goals, um, but we are um, asking for approval of those goals, and we'll report on them throughout the year. Any comments? I was going to make a motion. Oh, well, fantastic. Go ahead, Jim. I move that the Board of Education approve the 2023-2024 district goals. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All right. All those in favor, uh, raise your right hand or say aye. Aye. All right. Uh, any opposed? Motion passes 6-0. All right, so it looks like next on the list, we are working on board advisory committee appointments. So um, let's go into the Health and Wellbeing Board Advisory Committee. Who'd like to take that? I move the Board of Education reappoint Don Greer to the Health and Wellbeing Board Advisory Committee for a second, for a two year term. All right, Tom. Made the motion, Jan seconded. Any um, discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand or say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes, 6-0. Go ahead, Sonia. Next. Next one. Go ahead, if you want. You're a CNI veteran, so <laughs> fire these away. Yep. Yep, just read, yep. I move, move that the Board of Education appoint Casey Johnson and Allison Polanis to the Curriculum and, and Instruction Board Advisory Committee for a new two-year term. Oh, Patrick. So we have motion by Sonia, second by Patrick. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand or say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Next. I move. I move that the Board of Education reappoint uh, Teresa Corte to the Curriculum and Instruction Board Advisory Committee for a new two-year term. We have Sonia made uh, the motion. Patrick sent, seconded. Um, any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand or say aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 6-0. Now we're on to Student Activities Board Advisory Committee. I move that the Board of Education reappoint Luke Samuel and Sarah Unrine to the Student Activities Board Advisory Committee for a second two-year term. Tom, Tom made the motion. Jan seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Raise your right hand or say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 6-0. All right, so item E. Oh yes, looks like we have item E. So we have uh, Children's Mercy Hospital contracts. Um, I move that the Board of Education approve the following two contracts with Children's Mercy Hospital renewal contract for the 2023-24 social workers, including 1.0 social worker supervisor and the Children's Mercy Hospital contract for a final year of a three-year supplemental contract for eight social workers added to the school-based mental health program model. Second. We have a motion by Tom, a second by Jan. Any discussion? I just have a, a couple 
comments. I asked this be pulled out, and um, we had some we had some discussion about it this morning. So I'll just reiterate a couple of the points. Um, this morning, in our just uh, attached on board docs was our building needs assessment, um, which were our state required assessments that are prepared by each of our schools and kind of a recurring theme in in a lot of those assessments well actually probably in almost every one of the assessments is the need for additional staffing it could be a counselor could be social worker could be a math interventionist that was probably the one I remember the most could be literacy could be smaller class sizes which would be more teachers and so I think we're faced with um, more wants than we have money um, that we allocate and how we allocate those funds um, is a priority you have to pick and from from my perspective uh, until each of those educational um, the uh, educational roles are satisfied until we have class sizes at a, what I would judge to be, you know, ideal levels. Um, this to me doesn't seem like a, a the right place to spend seventy-five thousand dollars, basically seventy-five thousand dollars per school. So that's my that's the reason I asked for it to be pulled out. I, I recognize that a lot of this, these principles don't want to lose their social workers so but you got to pick and choose you know you they also don't want to they also want to all have a, a math interventionist and they all want to have you know an instructional design coach etc so all right so any other comments okay let's go ahead and vote um, all those in favor say raise your right hand or say aye so that would be one, two, three, four. Uh, any opposed? I like to abstain from this. Um, I, have certain, I have certain feelings, you know, regarding uh, social workers in a school. I think that's very important for mm -hmm. the children. And I, and I'm fairly new, but I strongly feel that they definitely need to be in the schools mm -hmm. uh, because I, what I've seen, my experience within the school system. Uh, just to be clear, and maybe Melissa can correct me on this, an abstention is a no vote. It's a no okay. vote. So you would be voting no. Okay, well, I, well then I would <laughs> for it. Okay, then. so how do we go back a little bit here and... Okay, so yeah. let's go ahead and just take that vote again. This is completely normal, by the way. We got a brand new board member asking questions, oh. and, and this is, Listen, I've been there, it's all good. I've been here for three years, and I'm fumbling but, along over here. So but hearing what you it. said, we need to revote again. <laughs> 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 okay, so let's go ahead and call for a vote again. Um, all those in favor, raise your right hand or say yay. Aye. Um, and the, any opposed? Okay, so that would be five. Four and one against. Right. So uh, the motion carries. All right. So next is item F, technology contracts. I move the Board of Education approve the following four technology contracts with CW, CDW-G for yearly maintenance of JAMF software management platform, CDW-G for Microsoft enrollment for education solutions, master agreement, for the district license for staff and students. Synetic Technologies for Computer and Device Repairs Services for Apple Equipment and Tech Cycle Solutions for Computer and Device Repair Services for Dell and Chromebooks Equipment. Okay, so Tom made the motion, Jan seconded. Any discussion? All right, I asked, yeah, I asked for these four contracts to be um, pulled and separately considered. Um, and my my reasons for doing so, um, and we've had some, some dialogue here this morning, and um, 
and looked closely at these contracts the the contracts themselves are reasonable given the um, the way that we do technology broadly in the district right we we have a one-to-one -one device program throughout all ages in the district elementary middle school high school um, but I would strongly urge our board to closely um, reconsider that approach. Uh, I don't think it's, I, I don't think there's education, I, I really don't think there's educational benefits. I think there are educational detriments to, to the way we approach use of technology in our schools. I'm clearly, in, I think I'm clearly in the minority, but I'm gonna just read two comments that were in the building needs assessments from different principals or different schools. Um, first, student addiction usage seems to be an emerging, this is from an elementary school, emerging barrier. Elementary students are coming to school preoccupied with gaming, YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram. They want immediate gratification and attention. As educators, we need to provide more opportunities for staff and families to learn about the impact of technology on our littles and the importance of boundaries and intentional usage of technology. As I speak with parents and my colleagues, technology usage seems to be intertwined with the students who have increased behaviors. I have sought out research on this topic and it is very concerning. It's not directly related to how we use technology. It's simply that we have a lot of technology in our lives as it is and uh, we have an opportunity when they're in school to create a more peaceful environment, which I, I think a lack of, or not having one-to-one -one devices would do. The second comes from a middle school. Lack of student engagement. While the one-to-one -one learner initiative has power to enrich learning, middle school students are already so fixated on technology in their daily lives that Chromebooks provide many tempting opportunities for disengagement and inappropriate behaviors. We need to provide more guidance and capacity building around the blended learning model and best practices using classroom technology. Despite our middle school approach to cell phones in the schools, this is a constant battle for teachers and administrators alike. We have made significant strides this year, but appropriate use of technology is something that is contributing greatly to students' lack of engagement and decreased academic progress. So I object of the contracts, not on the basis that they're not rational given what we do, based on the overall objection to the way we do technology in the district. So I, I need to make a, a comment here. So I think a couple of key things that you read, intentional use of technology. So I'm fairly confident that we don't have an administrator that would come in here and say that we want no technology in our buildings, uh, but we do need to do intentional use of technology. Um, we absolutely want students engaged. We want, um, we also want a level playing field. So we want Indian Valley students to have the same options as students in another elementary. I could pick another one. And by having the baseline of uh, technology use, we're able to do that. The other thing I would say is that there are certain, we have to have technology in our schools. Um, we are required to do state assessments minimally starting in grades three. Um, that require that use. Um, there is no one who thinks that a student should be on technology all day long at any level, absolutely. So I don't, we don't disagree on that. Um, I do think that those administrators would have some different um, opinions on that. Yeah, I, I recognize that, um, you know, it's a little bit harder to take the toothpaste or, you know, it's already been sque squeezed out of the tube back into the tube. Um, but there's, um, there's, not a, there's not a kid that do, isn't exposed to technology outside of school. And, um, you know, so, so in, in, you know, what I would advocate for is just a, a, a much less use of it for delivery of instruction, et cetera. I mean, there's a lot of things we could get into and, and debate. Um, and you know, I'm, I think there would be a lot of time for us to do that. Um, I'm not necessarily, these aren't 
directly tied to that particular more philosophical discussion but the costs associated with how we do and support technology are all intertwined if you have 22,000 students that each have a device that each have software loaded on them etc you pay for each one of those devices for every program that goes on there and it's 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 and then there's a level of infrastructure support and hardware support etc etc so we may not get there this year but I in the next decade there's going to be a there's going to be a redirection in this country away from the way we as a country are doing things in our schools because we're going to find that we've got kids that are you know frenetic it at much higher rates than we've then we've experienced and this is like a new experiment which didn't exist even Mike the first time we went to one-to-one device my 21 year old was somewhere in the middle of his years at Blue Valley Southwest and I was opposed to it now or then and I'm opposed to it now so so Jim I you know I appreciate your comments and I know we've had this discussion over the last you know couple years or whatever and and you know the intentionality and and what we've seen and I know you and I have been on tours in our schools and and we don't see the devices out all the time um, we we see them as the tools for for special projects that that um, that, that they have um, that they're working on so um, that aside so I'm, I'm saying I don't think our district and our our staff disagree with uh, you know un, unrestricted use um, we're just using it as another tool like a calculator like other tools that we use but I believe and I could be wrong on this but um, a number of these things are are like carding software that you get into your building with for staff um, I, I mean this isn't just this is like some security stuff that that helps you access the building from a staff standpoint. So, um, that I, I don't I don't think so. I think one of you guys two of these are device repair contracts. One is a, a software management, basically a device management or, or a software on all the various devices. And well, I can't remember what the other one is. I probably one of them is Microsoft, right? Patrick, do you need Brian to speak into the microphone? Uh, this work? Yes. Thank uh, you. I mean, I did have a question, ultimately. I mean, this technology is something that is across all grades, um, and it allows more efficient, more effective instruction because you don't have competing issues or um, lack of um, consistent. Right. When we did our uh, technology study, that was one of the things that came back pretty loud and clear is that um, we we wanted a level playing field. We wanted students to have consistent technology. Uh, we didn't, uh, teachers didn't want to have to figure out how I brought a MacBook from home and you're trying to do something on your phone. They wanted a consistent platform uh, to be able to use. Um, but again, no one thinks we should be using technology 24-7. Uh, at all in our classrooms. And Brian was talking a little bit about what the four specific contracts are. Yeah, so the Microsoft's the big one that districts across the country are going through every year in July. It's going to be our largest, uh, which is why we do a campus agreement so we don't have to be billed on an individual per user license, which would be an exorbitant amount of money. So they give school districts campus agreements. Anything that uses a Microsoft license to attach to anything has to be licensed. So one to learner aside, without the licensing, <clears throat> as I was saying, safety and security devices couldn't connect to our servers. You would have no printing or copy, copying services with, throughout the district. You would have no, uh, none of our virtual labs for high school students to be able to access. Um, Tanya mentioned access control. We wouldn't be able to function here as a board in this boardroom or do what these gentlemen are doing here. So Microsoft is an all-encompassing licensure 
So make sure we are fully functional throughout the school year, one to learner aside. Um, so if we didn't have one to learner, would we still need to get that? Regardless of one to learner, that Microsoft contract wouldn't change. Okay. It's, it's, it's every year on the year. Now, that, would, that, would, the, would the dollar figure be different? <clears throat> the dollar figure, one to learner or not, continually goes up with Microsoft because they keep, what they'll do is they keep adding services school districts need. So the most recent things that are added are a lot of cybersecurity efforts that are needed within the district. So they've added things such as spam control and anti-phishing and the things we do to keep you safe throughout your day on your machines and in your email. So every time those things are implemented into our license, of course, that raises those costs. So the, the cost of Microsoft, yeah, last year it might have been, um, you know, ten twenty thousand dollars $20,000 less, but just like anything else with the normal 5% increase on technology every year, you're going to see that, see that increase, which is the cost of doing business. <clears throat> the, uh, the Jamf items, um, we would still require a Jamf license to manage and administrate and have oversight over all staff and teacher devices. If we didn't have one to learner, <clears throat> Jake's team would be out building an, uh, labs in our schools, and our high schools and middle schools. We'd be taking up classroom space in elementary to build expensive labs that take even more uh, expensive devices and utility costs. So we were able to eliminate a lot of that by going to the one to learner and adding virtual labs instead that students can access on their one to learner devices. So we'd be reversing, <clears throat> and our superintendent stated a few minutes ago, when I arrived, we had tons of inequity throughout all school sites. Some that had a lot of devices, some that didn't, mm -hmm. just depending on the type of PTO they had. We also had students, we had a massive BYOD program where students were bringing any device they wanted from home which caused havoc for support, uh, cybersecurity issues. Um, these guys over here were supporting 20 different brands of computers, whatever was brought in from home. They were bringing in uh, machines that were the home computer that had you know, their parents' personal stuff on it that we had to go support. So by doing the one to learner, it created, as our superintendent said, a, a nice baseline where we could administrate, manage, have oversight of every machine, whether it was here in the district or at home. And we've always, when we went into this, even with previous boards, we always knew that we would allow instruction to drive the tech and not buy tech to buy tech, and we, wouldn't, we weren't going to let tech lead instruction. And so that's, that's still our stance to this day. But with a 100-mile square district, um, Having the one to learner has caused us to be a safer district, a much better managed district, um, whether it's financial or from a safety and security standpoint. It's also helped considerably with our health and wellness of our students when you look at things like bullying, um, uh, self-harm, and things like that, because we're able to have oversight of these machines, use products like Securely, and help students um, help save lives and do other things of that nature. So it's all encompassing when you talk about this this license structure. Um, Thanks, Brian. <coughs> yep. Appreciate you. Thank you. That was nice and in depth. I, I really appreciate that. So um, we have a motion by Tom, a second by Jan. We've had discussion. Um, do we, are we ready for a vote? Wait a minute. I, I got a oh, okay. No, this has nothing to do with personal devices or student cell phones at all. So this is just a repair of our district-owned Apple products or our Chromebooks um, so that we can have them repaired and put back into our 
uh, hot swaps for teachers to grab and replace students' broken devices so we don't inhibit any type of instructional time in the classroom. So we have those quick swaps at our school sites. <clears throat> These yeah. are only school issued devices, Patrick. Yes. Nothing with anybody has a personal device that would not be included in any of this. Brian's history lesson was fantastic. That's exactly what happened. Our, our technology was a disaster, I thought, 10, 12 years ago, to be candid with you. I think it's gotten 6,000 times better with yours and Brian's leadership, which is awesome. Jim makes some great philosophical points. I, I agree. We can't let technology take over. We're going to head in the wrong direction. So. I mean, so, but I think for what we need to do here and continue on, it's obviously yep. a, a good thing. This is some good discussion, yeah, so I, I don't, appreciate it. I, again, I don't disagree that given the way we're structured, that this is, the, the, in the contracts themselves are fine. I mean, I did a school tour last year to an elementary school. It was a freezing cold day. 45, 50 kids are inside in the, in the flexible learning space. Uh, for recess, and 45 out of 50 of them went and grabbed a Chromebook and played games, sit, sat there and played games, exactly what you would expect them to do. So does that happen often? Probably not. But did it happen the day that I and another board member and superintendent were walking through? Yes, it did. And when I talked to that principal later on about that, because you mentioned that to yeah. me, uh, that particular grade level doesn't use technology all day. So that was the one time throughout their day uh, that they were going to get to use it. So. Okay. All, All right. right. <laughs> okay. So we ready to go ahead and get a vote? So um, raise your right hand or say um, yay. <laughs> Are all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. All right. Any opposed? Okay. So that would be five in favor and one opposed. Uh, motion passes. Um, I already said the number, so. All right, so next, item G, tension hitting tunnels contract. I move the Board of Education approve the sports field specialty contract for tension hitting tunnels. Second. Okay, so uh, Tom made the motion, Jan seconded. Um, any discussion? Just a very quick comment. I actually, what Jake has done, Jake Swadnick has done here, is smart in the overall context. Of the fact that this is going to pass, and we already voted to uh, several months ago to approve the artificial turfing of all of our baseball and softball fields because it saves us money over whatever the original approval was. Um, I'm just lodging my disagreement with the all going to all turf and on our baseball and softball fields. Uh, but individually, the contract, I understand the rationale for it. All right. Uh, fantastic. So um, let's go ahead and all those in favor, say aye or raise your right hand. Aye. Any opposed? Same sign. Okay. Motion passes 5-0. Five 5-1. Zero. Five five sorry. Oops. Sorry, Jim. Tried to... Yeah, there's a lot today, I must say. <laughs> All right, so are we there? Fantastic. So uh, anyone interested in making a motion to adjourn? Sonia, bring us home. I move that the Board of Education organizational meeting for July 17th, 2023 be adjourned. Second. Okay, motion carries. Six zero. Well, I didn't hear Patrick. Five zero. <laughs>